Good morning. Sometimes the organist surprises me. Keeps us all young. Good morning. Welcome to the First Congregational Church of Oshkosh. We say here in this congregations and in congregations around the United Church of Christ, no matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, no matter how you are participating in this community of faith, you are welcome here. We do show the announcements before and at the end of the service, but I do want to highlight just a few. This morning, immediately following worship in this very space, we will have a congregational meeting. The congregational meeting has been called to consider two recommendations for grants from the Permanent Opportunity Fund. So please do plan to stay for that. You don't have to move at all. And then you do need to move immediately following the congregational meeting. Downstairs in Fellowship Hall, we will have a potluck lunch. And all are invited, whether you brought food or not, please know you are welcome to come and join the feast. Also, please, uh, we did have it on announcement, but need to make sure everyone knows, kind of wave, wave the red flag. <laughs> In two weeks, the FCC will move to its summer worship schedule, which means starting in June, we will worship at 9.30 in the morning. So that leaves us a little bit more of the rest of Sunday to um, revel in God's magnificent creation as we move into summertime. And because we are moving into summertime, it is the choir's last Sunday until one Sunday toward the end of June. So please do make sure you celebrate and thank these faithful singers who bring us music week after week and bring us joy. So we will miss you, but we are glad you get a rest. Are there any other announcements? Well, let us all then take a deep breath. Be willing to settle in and settle down. Let whatever is weighing on our hearts, let it rise up to God. Let us open ourselves to receive the gifts of grace the Holy One has prepared for us in this time. And so with the sound of the singing bowl, let us begin our worship service. Graham. Graham, would you be willing to come forward and light the peace candle? And let us pray. With prayers for peace in our hearts and peace and healing in our world, we light this candle. Thank you. And now I invite you to rise if it's comfortable for you to do so and let us share the signs and the words of peace with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. Peace, peace, peace be with you. And I invite you to join me in the responsive opening words. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were together in one place. Today, followers of the way are in many places. From Jerusalem to Galilee, to Pago, from Pago Pago to Apia. From Rome to Arabia, from Las Vegas to Cleveland. God's spirit still blows like a mighty wind. God's spirit still burns like tongues of flame. Dancing over the heads of truth tellers and justice builders. Praise, Praise God. God. Let us worship God, from whom all blessings flow. Our opening hymn this morning is number 239, Wake, the Dawn is Now Full Rising.
Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, enter this moment. Enter our lives. Whisper our names and scatter your gifts of grace with wild abandon. Give your silent strength to all imprisoned by the structures of injustice or the poison of hate. Let your tongues as of fire be our sign of life and love. Come, Holy Spirit, help us find ourselves in vital places, bringing your word of freedom to the poor, the oppressed, the lost, and the lonely. Amen. Please be seated. And, and I invite the young folks forward for some time up front. <laughs> or some time in the back. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to see you all. It's nice to see you all. We're good. So this Sunday, we're actually doing it a week early. We're celebrating Pentecost, which is why there's all this red around. And Pentecost is about the gift of God's Spirit to give birth to the church, which is to give birth to us. And it's about the gifts of the Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit of God in you. And you and you and me and you all and sometimes our gifts are kind of hard to recognize now this may surprise you but I've kind of been tall for a long time as a kid I was taller than all the other kids in school even though I was a year younger I was still taller than they were and how do you think I felt about that sad yeah Graham? Um, maybe uh, um, more people notice that you're taller than everyone. Yeah, I got, yeah, and, and I, got a lot of I got a lot of attention, which I didn't necessarily want. In fact, I couldn't stand that I was tall. It was hard to get clothes long enough and all this stuff. And over time, I came to see, you know, it's still hard to find clothes long enough, just so you know. But it started to come in handy. I'd be in the grocery store, and there was something way up on the shelf I wanted, and I could get it. And there could be somebody else there who needed help. And they kind of noticed I was tall. And I said, can you get that for me? And I said, yes. So sometimes, the gifts we have, because it's turned out to be an okay thing to be tall, it takes us a while to realize. And, you know, like all gifts, it's not the right thing for everything. So if you need somebody who fits in a tiny little space, I'm really not your person. <laughs> yeah. So we have, I'd like to, you all to invite you to get, get up and join me, join me over here. We have some things for this Sunday to help us remember the kind of gifts that people can have, people, things that people can do that they can share with others. Do you notice anything? I notice there's an old kind of guitar. Yeah, there's a stringed instrument. Somebody who knows instruments, tell me what this is. It's Jody's. Okay, well, it's a Jody instrument. <laughs> So, so the, so that, what, what would you call that kind of gift to be able to play that? Um, really hard because I do not know how to play. <laughs> so it's a gift to give. It's a gift to share music, right? And what, what else do you see? Do you see anything else, Marcy? Um, that silver thing. Yeah, this little horn. It's another way to make a completely different kind of music. So if people don't like strings. They can, they can blow a horn, which makes a bigger noise. Woo! Yep. You got anything? See anything else? I see there's a lot of yarn, and I think that's from 
Bad at making stuff for everyone? Yeah, yarn and needles. So people, and one of the things that happens here is people make scarves, anti-bullying scarves to give to kids, to tell them they're, they, they're, they're loved and they shouldn't be bullied. And what about up here? What's that? Hmm? A bird. A bird, yeah, there's some birds around. And then this great big thing. It seems like a sunrise. It seems like a sunrise. And it's, it's either a picture. Gretchen, is it a picture? It's a picture. So that's a kind of gift, too, to take beautiful pictures. You take, do you have your phone? You take pictures with your phone? Yeah, yeah. So that's another thing we can share with one another. Beauty, you see this incredible sunrise or sunset and say, I want to share this. So what do you think you might have to share? Do you like to play games? You like to play games? You like to play sports? Uh, yeah. For the work as a team? So you get the chance to be with a team and help one another? Any other gifts? Any things you like to do? Marcy? Talk. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's a gift to share because sometimes some of us don't, some of us just kind of hesitate to talk. And then there are other folks who lead the way. How about you guys? Anything you like to do? Sports, Sports yeah. So can you share that with other people? Sports. Sports, yeah. So it's a tough question because when I was your age and I was really tall, I thought it was a stinky thing to be tall. And now I've come to think of it as a gift. So as you grow, let's head back to the stairs. As you grow, Keep paying attention to what it is that you can bring, what it is can you can share with people to make the world a more fun place or more, a, a, more, a more loving place. A more better place. A better place, yeah. So in one of the gifts that we kind of mentioned, we mentioned over there is the gift of music. And so for our prayer this morning, We've got a video of a couple of people in the congregation, Rowan and Carrie, singing a prayer for us. So let us pray. Holy, 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 my heart, my heart adores you. My Thank you. All right, so you can head to church school or back to the pews. The first reading this morning is from what is known as Paul's first letter to the church of in Corinth, as he does so often in his letters, he encourages the church community, community to recognize and embrace the Holy Spirit's movement in their midst. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 3b through 13. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the, uh, the utterance of wisdom.
and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, and to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, and to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Our second reading is from the book of Acts, and it describes the coming of the Holy Spirit on the first apostles during the Jewish festival of weeks, also known as Pentecost. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Judeans and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Upon, even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends this morning readings.
If you've participated in one of the small groups I've led over my years here, it, there's a good chance at some point when we gather together, I ask you to share with one another what your favorite breakfast is. It's not a very spiritual question, I confess. But it's a question that not, and of course, not everyone eats breakfast, but you know, it, it's, it, it's a question that we can mostly relate to. And we don't usually feel like we're risking a whole lot of vulnerability to share that information with one another. The other reason I ask that, that and I like to hear about food. Another reason I ask that is that we get to start our conversations hearing that we're different. Some folks like really hearty breakfasts. Others like coffee. Others like eggs. Others want it to be vegan. All sorts of possibilities for our breakfasts. And maybe, just maybe, we can see those differences as differences. Nobody's breakfast preferences are better than the others, although blueberry pancakes. <laughs> we so often in church, in our families, in our lives, in our country, in our world, encounter difference, recognize difference, and we have to rank it. This is better than that. My religion's better than your religion. Your my football team is better than your football team. Let's not go there. It's what we do. It seems to be a strong impulse. And guess what? That's not news. Take a look, listen, read Paul's letter to the Corinthians. And they're jostling about who's got the better spiritual gifts. Well, I've got knowledge. Oh, well, that's just fact. I have wisdom. I can speak in tongues. Well, who cares if nobody can understand you? I can interpret tongues. Ha! All these different spiritual gifts, and you get this sense from Paul's letter that they're just jostling with each other. Who's got the best? Why do we do that? Well, maybe, just maybe, we're not all that certain that we do, in fact, have the gift of the Holy Spirit within us. So we have to try to prove it by being better than others. And that is a fool's game. Paul comes and tells them and us. There are all these gifts, music, knitting, photography, painting, wisdom, knowledge, prophesying, all these different gifts. And if they come from the Spirit, it, there's no ranking. And all these gifts, every last one of them, is meant, are meant for the common good. In some ways, that's how we can know they're from the Spirit. Do they serve more than ourselves and those we consider our family and our tribe? From one Spirit comes all these gifts for the common good. But I suspect, if I ask you all, like I asked the younger folks, so what are, your, what are your gifts that the Spirit has given you to share with others? You might be a little stumped. Kind of like I was stumped about being tall. It's like, why? Why did you do this to me? My poor grandmother, who was also tall, sent money to my mom and dad to take me to the doctor to see if the doctor could stop it. <laughs> so I had some help in thinking it wasn't a gift. But over time, 
it became one of the things that I can offer in the world. And there are times, especially in grocery stores, when it is for the common good. So I ask you on this Pentecost early Sunday, to imagine, as we saw with the video with Rowan and Karen, those flames as of fire, tongues as of fire, over your head, maybe burning in your heart. What are the things? What are the joys? What are the skills? What are the pieces of vision you have? that God has given you through the Holy Spirit for the common good. We can be so stuck in thinking we don't have any gifts or our gifts aren't big enough or abundant enough so we sure as heck can't share them. We've got to keep them. Or we just think the whole thing is a bunch of nonsense anyway. It's not. As my colleague up the road at Water City Church has said on Easter Sunday last year, quoting from Scripture, do you not realize that the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you? The same Spirit that brings new life in the midst of death is in each and every one of us. That is the promise. And that is what we are invited to discover. And here's that wonderful thing about the Pentecost story. It's a little detail that it can be easy just to slip over, glide over. It's not that when the apostles started to speak, all of a sudden everyone from all around who spoke different languages could understand what the apostles were saying in the apostles' own language, presumably Aramaic, is that they heard what the apostles were saying, but they heard them in their own language. They didn't have to change to be somebody they weren't to hear the message of God in Christ. They didn't have to develop a new skill on the fly to be able to hear the good news of the gospel. They simply had to listen. That spirit that spoke through the apostles and translated into all these languages, that spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that spirit that makes life possible, is in us. And it's in us so that we can care for the common good. It's simple. It takes a lifetime of discernment to identify, to recognize, to nurture, to share those gifts. But it really is that simple. Who are you in God? What has the Holy One placed in your heart, your mind, your hands, your vision, that you and you alone can bring to share. It is in there. It is there for all of us. It's simple, it's radical, and it is the way God transforms the world. It is the way God brings healing and movement toward justice. I wish I could look at every single one of you and tell you what your gifts are. I can't. That is your discernment. We need to help one another. We ask questions. We ponder. 
but ultimately we have to discover them ourselves. That is God's invitation. That is God's challenge. Thanks be to God. Amen. We come to our prayer time, and we have a prayer of celebration to start with. There are two young women whose birthday is today, and we will now sing happy birthday twice. First, happy birthday, Meredith, and then second, happy birthday, Rowan. Let us begin. And if either of you want to know the gifts that some of the gifts you bring, ask the people in this church, because they see multitudes of gifts in you. Happy birthday. We also, as we continue our prayer time, I invite you to hold Hope Linton in your hearts and in prayer. Uh, Hope has entered, um, I think, her last days or weeks on this earth. She is currently 104. <laughs> um, she has continued to be aware of who she is and who her family is, but we, we hold hope and her, uh, her children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren in love and prayer as she moves toward eternity. Are there other prayers of concern, celebration you would like to share with one another? Prayers of thanksgiving to see Marilyn here in this sanctuary. What a gift. Any others? Pat. The Nichols' next door neighbors, their mother passed away yesterday. We hold them in love and prayer, prayers for comfort and peace. Are there any others? Sally. Yes, yes, we do offer prayers of celebration and thanksgiving that the young Mr. Rink has been born. His name is Phineas Maximilian Rink. Baby and mother, dad and sister are all fine. Thank you, Sally. Well, then, let us hold the prayers that have been spoken and those that remain unspoken in our hearts together in a time of silence with one another held in the loving arms of God. holy mystery. We begin with prayers of thanksgiving for the gift of spring, for the beauty and bounty of this your earth, for all the ways it nurtures us and all of life, and prayers of thanksgiving too for all of your people around the world who care for this your earth. We give thanks to Prayers of celebration and joy for the safe arrival of Phineas, for the arrival 14 years ago of Rowan and Meredith, for all of your people, 
You call us to care for one another and to help one another discover our gifts and discover who we are in you. We pray, O oh God, for those who have passed from this life, especially the Nichols neighbor. We pray for all who are grieving, for the Reichenbergers. We pray for all who are lost and lonely, who do not experience the love in which you hold them, who hear words of condemnation and hate from the world. We pray for all those imprisoned in body, mind, or spirit, especially those trapped in a cycle of violence. And loving God, we hold Hope and her family in our hearts and prayers, amazed at the gifts and gifts she has been for over a hundred years. And however swiftly or slowly she moves into eternity, we know you are ready to welcome her. And gracious God, we give thanks for the life, the ministry, the death and resurrection and continued presence of your beloved Jesus. He does indeed continue to walk this earth in our midst, calling us to name, to claim, to share the gifts that you have given us to transform your world, to join him in loving and healing the world. And so in his name we pray and we lift up our voices in the words Jesus taught so long ago as we say, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Sticking with the theme, we are here, we are able to gather, we are able to be with people across town and across the world. Thanks to the generous gifts of those who have gone before and the generous gifts of those who are here now. We are called to be people of generous spirit, sharing all the gifts that we have. And so as the morning offering is received, let us imagine a new and more loving world and give of ourselves generously to make that possible. Let us receive the morning offering. Thank you. 
please join me in the prayer of dedication. All good things come of you, O God, and of your own do we give you. We ask that you take these gifts and use them to bring more of your love, light, and blessing into this community and throughout your world. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 439, God Dismiss Us With Your Blessing. Just a reminder, congregational meeting following worship, potluck lunch following congregational meeting. And now, beloved ones, when you do go into this world, go in filled with the Holy Spirit. Go out into the world ready to share who you are and what you bring with the world in need. And may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the companionship of the wild, unpredictable Holy Spirit be with us and guide us all. Amen. Mm -hmm.